fear. It affects our physiology, our motivation. We don't operate the way we should operate. Enthused, excited. Nauseous rage. Lift up the head. Sometimes we've got to see things from a higher perspective. Nauseous rage on its simplest level means lift up your head. When we do things and actions that give us a sense of Vayigva Liboy Bedarke Hashem, that we too have an important role. Whatever we're doing within the framework, within the army of Hashem is important. I don't have to be busy comparing myself to everyone else. Nase Esresh. Nase Esresh probably means and alludes to something a little more. Nase Esresh, lift up the head, see things from a higher perspective. Lepe Savoisam, look where we're coming from. We carry such a rich legacy. We're a vital link in a chain for future generations, Lebe Savoisam. And so we have our own little link over here that we have to complete. Everyone has their own individual mission and purpose that is absolutely critical to the big picture. Now say us Rish, see it from a broader perspective. And when we see it from a broader perspective, we're not busy comparing ourselves anymore. It's much different. You know, when we lift ourselves up and we look from up high, when a person's looking from a plane, a car and a house look pretty much the same. Down on the ground, one is... 35 feet high and one is only 5 feet high it doesn't matter but from up above it looks entirely different the higher one climbs the more infinitesimal the fraction the difference, the fractional difference between things really are the higher we are the smaller things are the less important they are the less we're busy comparing ourselves to everybody else I once said over the story, there was a Badchan that came to a wedding, <coughs> and the Balatanya was there, and he had to... Badchan, in front of the Balatanya, he had to say Graman, he had to say rhyme. How is he going to say things in front of the Balatanya? <coughs> How is he going to chastise the Chazan, or say Divri Musa, in front of such a great giant? He felt inadequate, so he opened up his words by saying, look, he dressed the Balatanya, and he said, whatever, what's the real difference between the, the Balatanya and myself? Whatever you don't know, I certainly don't know. <laughs> whatever I know, you do know for sure. What's the difference? The difference is between what you know, the Torah that you know, and that I don't know. That is only a tip of minayam of what there is to know, because the Torah is endless and infinite. So the difference isn't so great, so therefore I will be mayas upon him, I will open up my mouth and speak, say my words. It's a mindset when we look at things from a broader, bigger perspective, things are really zeloch hashuv, it's not so important, it doesn't really, we can see things differently. Noseis reish, it's an important mindset in life. And the truth is, we all need chizuk in this area. There's a, another way of understanding Nasius Roish. The Svarim tell us, lift up Roish, the letters Roish. If you lift up and you go to the next letter of Roish, you have Shin. The next letter of Aleph, you have Base. The next letter of, of Shin, you have Toph. And you have the word Shabbos alluded to there. We lift up our mindset, we lift up our heads through the medium of Shabbos. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit what this means. This is perhaps not the practical, natural avenue through which we're able to navigate all those negative feelings that sometimes can swamp us, all those feelings of insecurities and those feelings of inferiorities that sometimes pull us down. There's a different avenue and pathway to Nasus Rosh. Shabbos. Shabbos is described in the Zohar as the Yoma de Nishmasa. It's the day of the soul, the love, Yoma de Gufa Klal. It's not the day of the body. We're not going to use natural techniques, if you will, to push aside all those negative feelings and thoughts that are not from the Olam Abinyan. 
we're going to enter into a world of light. And when we enter into a world of light and we see the world from the inside out, life looks entirely different. Life is! It doesn't just look, it is entirely different. I'm going to explain this a little bit. You know, in the field of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapies, we're trying to recondition our minds to think positively, not to allow negative thoughts to determine our actions and our impulses. And the different ways of doing it, there's a whole body Mm -hmm. and school that emphasizes how external actions promote the internality. In order not to let those negative thoughts and feelings interfere us, we occupy the mind with positive things. We occupy ourselves with constructive acts. We do things to avoid conflict. We exercise and so on. There's another avenue that is stressed where we engage the mind with positive thinking traits. We see the bigger picture. Transition into a... we We see things from a... We, we reframe the way we look at things. But this is a third way, the world of Shabbos. We allow ourselves to be piloted by our neshama. I had this, we have it all the time, but you know, sometimes you wake up in a negative mood, things are just, you know, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, just things are not really rosy, we're facing a lot of challenges and pressures this particular day. I had this, this week, one day, last week, one day, I remember coming out of the house, going to shul, and it's like, you know, pushing, you're feeling all the aches and pains when we're not in a good mood, all of a sudden, Everything is creaky and cranky. <laughs> we just, you know, it's just so hard. <laughs> We're pushing along. I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to allow myself. My body is just a cloak. It's a cage. And it's rattling. It's making all kinds of noises. It's creaking. I'm going to be piloted to shul. I'm going to move to Davin and to engage Hashem from my neshama. There's a chok, there's a, there's a potential to move forward, not with the rational mind, not with the logical mode of thinking that is enmeshed in my body, but with my neshama. I'm connected to you, Hashem, and I'm holding on to you, and I'm doing what you want. I'm not interested, and I'm not going to be cognizant of all the noise that emanates from the walls and oozes out from all seeps from out of the body and into all the, every fiber of my emotional being. That's the cage. That's the prison walls in which we live, the mate sorum. I'm going to function independent of my emotions. I will move forward, piloted by the light inside of me, by the neshama inside of me. I'm doing your will. And as we disengage and move forward, hearkening to the neshama, hearkening to our inner voice, inner conscience, knowing what we are supposed to be doing. It's like, we're moving forward. It's like Yaakov picking himself up after fighting the angel of Esau that was ma'ala avak at kiseh covered. The dust went all the way up to the heavenly throne. <laughs> and the Sfarim say that really... That sorry shall ace of, that ace of lies in each and every one of us. Sometimes all the dust of the body, all the sediments are kicked up and we can't feel the neshama at all. But Yaakov moves on. He goes on to Penuel and Ve'yizrech le Hashemesh, the sun starts to shine. Do you know the light inside of us, when we connect to the Ratzon Hashem and simply purely doing the Ratzon Hashem, it's like a dynamo. It actually generates energy. The light starts to trickle down and we no longer are conscious of all the aches and the pains and the feelings of, of, of disability and we're not capable and we're not motivated and we're feeling self-conscious and we're feeling inferior. It actually, we keep moving forward. We're doing the Rosh We're not interested in the body. We're here to do your will. And that 
lifts up everything else. Nase Yisroish. All we need to do is lift up our heads. Live in a world of Shabbos. I want to share with you, because I think, you know, it sounds on the outside maybe a little zenny or a little, a little strange, a little zany, <laughs> a little out of the box. But this is a pathway in Havodah Sashem which is important for each and every one of us to think about, to absorb. You know, on Shabbos, the highlight of Shabbos is really, I guess there are many highlights, but the highlight to someone who's tuned into Shabbos is the saying of Nishmas. Nishmas Kol Chai is one of the most beautiful pieces, Tosus in, in Psachim tells us, it's, 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 a, it's, it's almost a mini Hallel. It's, it, it is a, it's a form of mini Hallel. It's, it's, a, it's, a, has a, it's called Birchas Hashir. It's a, a Shira that flows from inside of us, that connects us to a source of Bracha. It's, it's the highlight. We don't know exactly who authored the Nishmas, it's clear that it was written in the time of the Anshe Knesset Agdola, the Machs of Vitri and others say it was written by a collection of the Anshe Knesset Agdola, great Tano Mamoroam, others say it was Rabbi Meir. doesn't matter. The words of Nishmas, we don't have the author because once we ascribe it to someone, it's missing the entire message of Nishmas. The entire message of Nishmas is that there is no author. Everything flows from above. The Shia flows from within us, and that is a source of bracha. It's sad, sometimes I come to shul, and we're in a minion, and nishmas is just like said, like everything else. Nishmas, kol chai, tevarech, hashim chai. And to the end, you, you feel like, what? nishmas. Where I daven in Yerushalayim, in Slonim, Nishmas takes, sometimes I actually look at the clock, but it takes almost 20 minutes. Nishmas is, is it's, it's said, it's whispered, it's just, it's, it's, it's so powerful. It encapsulates the essence of Shabbos and what it's all about. The Ibn Ezra composed some are, some are, the, there's a special nigan that we have, a special zemer. I actually wanted to bring with his mirrors to be able to, to, um, Libby was sorry, Yuraninu al Kelchoi. He ends off, Be'es Eftach Pi Benishmas Kolchai. It's a hakdama, his whole nigan, that the Chassam Sofa says was written, Beruach HaKodesh, was written as an introduction to Nishmas. And the essential theme of Nishmas, there's one central, essential theme that flows through Nishmas. Of course, it begins and it builds itself up to a point where we give thanks and recognize the infinite flow of divine blessings that we are the recipients of. Bless me, Asida. There's so much bracha. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us life and animating us every second. Every aspect of our lives flows from Him. And we give constant thanks and we say, mm-hmm. If we would utilize all the kalim, the vessels that we have to praise you in the most expansive way possible, our mouths would be full of song like the sea. Our tongues would sing your praise, our lips, kehamoin galov, like, like the waves, like the, our tongues would sing like the multitudes of the waves. Our lips would be shevach, would praise you, kemerchaver okia, our eyes would be kashem v'chayrech. We're talking all about the most brilliant in this material world, the most expansive ways of praising you. Our hands would be stretched out. There is no way that we could possibly give you sufficient thanks. Because we're limited. 
we're finite. We're boxed in. We're hemmed into a body. And we realize that you've done so much kindness. There's an infinite, there's a flow of kindness that comes since time immemorial. In every moment and in every second. And then we come to a stage where we say, Hashem, I can't do anything. I don't deserve anything. Until now, everything that I've received is from your rachamim, from your mercy, your infinite mercy. And you didn't abandon me. And therefore, the cross says in Mishle. And therefore, all we want is just to keep it flowing. It's not that we're doing anything to deserve anything. And then we say, Al came, therefore. And here we find the essence of Nishmas. See, we human beings are the most wondrous creature of all. We incorporate all of mankind. And we have the ability to fuse heaven and earth, body and soul, through the medium of our mouth and our lips. Our breath is our soul, it's our neshima, and it formulates into words through the medium of our bodies. And we say, al came therefore, a vorim shepilakt upon him. The limbs that you set inside of us, that you put the organs that you put inside of us, v'ruach ha-neshama she nefakt about peinu, the spirit of life, the ruach, the neshama, that you blew into our nostrils, v'loshayn, and the tongue that you placed, you placed it in our mouth. I have no, and it, there's nothing that I can ascribe to myself. It's all you. There's a total, not simply a surrender. We're sublimating and recognizing all our energies flow from the divine. And then we're plugged in to the, to the source of it all, Ta'akadosh Baruch Hu. We're connected to the source of Bracha. Everything flows. Bracha is from the word brecha. It flows. It comes from the high to the low. And that's what we're saying. Hein heim yoidu vivorchu vishapchu. We're going to praise you. We realize we don't have anything ourselves. When we allow ourselves to connect and define our essence by our neshama, we are infused with heavenly energy. We have a different source of protection. This week in the parasha we have the birchas kohanim. And it's interesting that kohanim are chosen to bless Klal Yisrael, they're the conduit of blessing to Klal Yisrael, and they're instructed exactly how to bless Klal Yisrael. Hashem says to Moshe, Daba al-Aram bel bon of Lamer, so you shall bless the Bnei Yisrael. Omer lehem, say to them, Yivrecha cha Hashem v'yishmerecha. Yoye Hashem ponvelech Hashem should shine his light, to his face, towards you. Yisa Hashem ponvelecha v'yosim l'cha sholem. And the Kohanim are selected to give us this bracha and connect us to Hashem. Because the Kohanim are the ones who are, the Gemara says, the Shlucha de Rachmana and the Shlucha de Don. They combine heaven and earth. Even the food that they eat is all Kodshim. It's given by us. It's infused with Kedusha from heaven. They're the ones that connect us. And a Kohen may think to himself, well, how do I have a right to bless the Jewish people? With what energy am I invested to bless them? The Torah says, Omer Lahem which is a very interesting tense. Omer lahem. Rashi tells us it's k'moy zacher v'shomer. It's an instruction for the future. Omer lahem. You should always continuously say to them, like we say in the Aseres HaTibris, zacher as Yom HaShabbos. Remember the day of Shabbos. Shomer as Yom HaShabbos. God the day of Shabbos. And the Sforim tell us there's something deeper that Rashi is alluding to over here. How can it be that Amr Lahem, by the Kohanim saying to us this blessing, that we're connected to heaven? And the answer is, it's exactly like Shabbos. It's like Zohar and Shamar. When we keep the Shabbos, 
we are connecting to the soul, to the inside dimension that fuels us. A Kohen is simply a conduit. He's surrendering to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's almost like when he was giving the bracha of Yavarechecha with his hands out, he was recognizing, I'm just the intermediary. I'm just the intermediary. It flows from above, it flows through me, and it comes to the Bnei Yisrael. It's not that I am or I deserve or I think that I have anything, any superior rights. When we connect to that mindset, we become a source of bracha. We become a source of bracha. And we're able to communicate with Hashem. And we're able to receive His divine blessings. We introduce the Amida with the Pasuk in Tehillim. David HaMelech says, Hashem's Fosai Tiftach. Hashem, you open my mouth. And then, Ufi Yakitila I don't have any innate rights or energies. That's the most precious mindset that we can possibly have. I'm just an Ani. I'm just a poor man. I don't have anything myself. I'm the recipient of your gifts. I'm on heavenly welfare all the time, and you keep it flowing. Thank you. That's what we say at the end of Nishmas. Shavas Ani Matasishma. You know, for only the Evyoin Migoizloi, for only the Evyoin Migoizloi, and the poor man, you guard him from those that try to steal from him. What is there to steal from a poor man? You know, this from tells us the most wondrous thing. For only the Evyoin Migoizloi, you know, we're asking Hashem, don't take away from me, please, don't let the Yetzara steal from me that feeling that I'm an Oni and I'm an Evyoin. That is such a precious mindset. I'm just in your hands. I'm kugomul ale imoy. I'm like just a suckling. I have nothing. My soul is giving me life and giving me goodness and giving me breath every moment. The Abu Dram writes, actually, that the Nishmas is built on the last verse of Tehillim, the end of all time. The greatest prayer Hashem praises. We play six different musical instruments that the Sfarim tell us that belong to the six days of the week that are enumerated in that Hallelujah in that last piece of Tehillim, Tehillim Kufnan. The last words are, and this is the ultimate. This is Shabbos. Kol Hanashama Tehalel Ka Hallelujah. We can get a taste of this on Shabbos. That it's all you. I thank you. It's all flowing from you. And we can take that during the week. We can get a taste of Shabbos. Of course, Nasa es Rosh B'nei Gershon. We're all flooded. The body gives us feelings of being B'nei Gershon. We're all experiencing elements of conflict. Conflict with our life circumstances, conflict with our children, conflict with our closest relationships conflict with our bodies there's all different elements of where we're feeling gorosh disconnected and the answer to it all is Hashem says no serious rush and of course we have to employ the no serious rush we've got to lift up our head and we have to find ways of quieting that noise practical ways through the week but there's a higher source too. And this is the important, the most important one, because this, everything else leads to this. We want to be connected to you at the source. We want to live Chai Neshama. We want Va'ani Kinoi L'Shirach, that the body becomes transformed as a musical instrument because the soul is connected. We're energized from above. And if we contemplate this, obviously it's a very lofty concept, but if we contemplate it and we experience moments of it, there's a tamu uru ki toiv Hashem. We incorporate it on Shabbos when we're disconnected from so much of the distractions. Kol malach asuya. We get a taste of the olam We can carry it with us through the week. 
we can always experience those vibrations. We can lift ourselves up above all the noise and all the feelings that paralyze us and hold us back and don't allow us to actualize our potential. And in Mitzvah Hashem, we'll be zoicha all to live in the Olam HaNashamas, to experience Chai Netzach, eternal bliss. Good Shabbos.